There was a Spanish traveler who crossed the entire width of South America. And on the way, yes, uh, he reported seeing huge cities. Within a hundred years, other Spaniards were in there exploring. They couldn't find the cities. I think that we are dealing with a lost civilization that was shamanistic in its basis. And they're only, they're only being found now. Deep in the high, rugged terrain of the Sacred Valley, the Temple of the Sun at Olantetambo stands as a marvel of ancient engineering. The temple's most awe-inspiring feature is undoubtedly the wall of the six monoliths, composed of enormous stones weighing tens of tons each. The mystery of how these massive stones were transported to such an elevated location without modern technology continues to baffle scientists, historians and archaeologists alike. Some people find, think that the answer is, is extraterrestrial visitors. <laughs> I don't think that's the answer, but yeah. who knows? While theories abound from the use of log rollers and ramps to the sheer force of human and animal power, the exact methods remain a subject of speculation and admiration incredible megaliths there, which archaeology gives entirely to the Incas. Even though the Incas themselves recognized and honored the work of predecessors. The discovery of the Temple of the Sun in Olante Tambo within the Sacred Valley is a proof to the blend of local wisdom and global scholarly interest that has illuminated many Incan sites to the world. This particular site's journey into modern awareness began in earnest during the 19th century and gained significant momentum from the explorative zeal of the early 20th century. Notable figures like Hiram Bingham, known for bringing Machu Picchu to global attention in 1911, played a crucial role in setting the stage for the exploration, even though he wasn't directly involved in its discovery. The first detailed accounts emerged from the efforts of explorers like Sir Clements Markham in the late 19th century, these early explorers documented the Inca trails and their connecting sites, marveling at Olante Tambo's grandeur and intricate stonework while noting its potential significance. By the 1920s and 1930s, more thorough expeditions were conducted. Both Peruvian and international teams worked to catalogue the ruins using early photographic techniques, which helped to create detailed records that would prove invaluable for both restoration and further study. If you wish to pass information to a distant future, you wouldn't be smart to just write it down. How can we know that our script is going to be readable by any other culture, let's say 10,000 years in the future? The mid 20th century brought a surge of archeological interest that introduced more scientific methods to the study of this ancient site. Beginning in the 1950s, archeological teams started applying rigorous scientific techniques to their excavations, notably during the 1960s under the direction of American archaeologist John Rowe. His work was pivotal in contextualizing Olante Tambo within the broader narrative of the Inca Empire's expansion and religious practices. These teams made significant technological advances, employing early photographic equipment and, later on, more sophisticated imaging techniques to analyze the alignment of the temple's stones. This was especially important for understanding the temple's role in relation to astronomical events such as the solstices, which held considerable significance in Inca cosmology. On the summer solstice, you're going to see the sun rising far to the north of east. Go there on the winter solstice, you're going to see it far to the south of east. The local Quechua communities also played an essential role in the rediscovery and understanding of the Temple of the Sun. Their oral histories and legends, passed down through generations, spoke of the temple's celestial alignments and its role in Inca rituals. These stories often provided the missing links in understanding the site's function, highlighting the significance of specific stone placements and their relationship to Inca astrology. On many occasions, local stories guided archaeologists to specific parts of the site that had been overlooked or misunderstood. For instance, the legend of the Path of the Sun helped researchers identify and understand the importance of certain architectural lines that align with the sun during the winter solstice, further enriching our understanding of this magnificent site. That advanced civilization emerged out of shamanism itself. Shamans are very observant of the cosmos and of what is going on. Continuing our exploration of Olantai Tambo's fascinating features, let's delve into the marvel of the Wall of the Six Monoliths. This structure is a stunning testament to Inca engineering and architectural skill, comprising six massive stones, each carved with incredible precision. 
The craftsmanship is so meticulous that the joints between the stones are practically invisible, often said to be so tight that not even a piece of paper can slide through. The construction process of this wall was no small feat. The Incas employed sophisticated stone-working techniques honed over generations. The stones, sourced from quarries several kilometers away, required a complex logistical effort to transport. While the exact methods remain a subject of debate among historians, theories include the use of log rollers, llamas, and substantial human labor. Upon arrival at the site, these stones were shaped with great care to fit together seamlessly, using a technique known as ashlar masonry, which involves cutting stones to fit without the need for mortar. This not only enhanced the wall's aesthetic and structural integrity, but also its resilience against the region's frequent earthquakes. Understanding the geological and architectural principles was crucial for the construction of such a structure. The Inca builders meticulously selected types of stone for their durability and resistance to weathering. The strategic alignment and interlocking of the stones added to the wall's stability, effectively distributing seismic forces across the structure rather than concentrating them at any single point. Adding to the mystique of the Temple of the Sun is its status as an unfinished monument. The construction was abruptly halted, marked by a chaotic scene where tools and materials were left scattered around the site. Large, partially carved stone blocks still lie around the site, painting a vivid picture of a sudden and dramatic cessation of work. This snapshot in time provides a unique window into the Inca construction techniques and the meticulous planning that characterized their building processes. Is knowledge preserved and passed down through the ages? Yes, I think it is. To truly appreciate the enormity of the wall of the six monoliths, consider that each stone could weigh as much as 50 tons. This scale is comparable to the weight of 10 large African elephants or about 35 compact cars. Such comparisons not only highlight the ingenuity of the Inca builders, but also help us grasp the sheer scale of their architectural achievements. While exploring the impressive architectural feats of the Incas, another fascinating element at Ollantaytambo is the water mirrors near the Temple of the Sun. These reflective pools serve as a testament to the Incas' refined engineering and deep astronomical knowledge. Crafted to manipulate natural elements for both practical and ceremonial purposes, these water mirrors showcase a profound understanding of the environment. The design of these water mirrors was both ingenious and purposeful. The bases were made of flat, smooth stones polished to a high sheen, enhancing their reflective properties. The edges of the pools were lined with precisely cut stones, ensuring the water remained still and perfectly mirrored the sky above. The primary function of these mirrors was to observe and track celestial bodies, aiding the Incas in determining critical agricultural and calendrical periods. Such observations were vital for the timing of crop plantings and harvests, as well as for setting the dates of various religious festivals and ceremonies. The Incas demonstrated advanced hydraulic skills in constructing these water mirrors. They expertly channeled water from nearby rivers or springs through a complex system of aqueducts, ensuring a continuous flow into the mirrors throughout the year. This capability highlights their profound mastery of water management, which was essential for the functionality of the mirrors. The importance of these water mirrors came to light again in the late 20th century when they were rediscovered during a detailed archaeological survey. Covered by overgrowth and filled with debris for centuries, the mirrors were largely forgotten until the 1990s. Archaeologists using ground-penetrating radar and traditional excavation techniques found anomalies in the soil that led to the uncovering of these structures. Restoring them posed significant challenges. The process involved delicate procedures to clear the vegetation and debris without damaging the ancient stonework. Specialists in stone conservation were tasked with repairing cracks and replacing missing stones, using materials and techniques that matched the original Incan craftsmanship. An interesting parallel can be drawn between these Incan water mirrors and the Roman impluvium, water features central to Roman atrium houses designed to collect rainwater. While both cultures utilized architectural features involving water for practical purposes, the Incas took it a step further by integrating their water mirrors into their spiritual and astronomical practices, significantly differing from the Romans' primarily domestic use. This comparison highlights not only the universal human fascination with reflective surfaces in architecture across different cultures, but also the unique adaptations of such features to meet specific cultural needs and beliefs.